and one condition for natural selection to, ha to happen is first, there must be a genetic variation which equal to the trait variation. Okay, so this is the first thing for the natural selection to be happen. Okay, there must be a variation in trait. Okay, and different ratio in reproduction for different uh, for the individual in the population with different trait. Okay, some individual with certain trait will survive better, so they have a better reproduction rate because of the environment of or mutation pressure, the selection pressure. And this trait must be able to pass to the next generation. Okay. So as I said before, okay, um, not some part of the genome change more easily than the others in the course of evolution. Okay? It's not within the individual but across the evolution. Because for example, for non-coding gene, so that means that the, the, the part of the genome, the part of the DNA, they are not called for any gene, okay? They do not have a significant regulatory role, okay? They change more easily, okay? <clears throat> because every any mutation that happens in this non-coding DNA uh, sequence, okay? Non-DNA non, non, non part, it will not cause any effect on the organism, okay? So that means that this variation, this mutation, they will pass to the next generation, okay? And then in the next generation, maybe there will be a mutation happen again, and the, and the mutation happen in the next generation will pass to the next, next generation. And it's very really different from the coding DNA. Okay, this part of the DNA is very really important, and to to produce some very important protein or RNA molecule. So the mutation will not pass to the next generation because any mutation happen in this part of the uh, sequence, the DNA, this, this part, this part of the genome, the non-coding DNA. It's more likely to cause the animal to die, okay? Or with a very uh, or with a animal not to survive. So it will not pass to the next generation. So through the 3.5 billion years of evolutionary history, since the first cells, okay, until now, so many non-coding part of the genome have changed beyond the recognition, okay? You can imagine after so many years, you can't even recognize uh, the, what's the original. So for example, now I have the A, T, C, G, C, C. So let's say this is the original. After 1000 years, after many generations, it changed to A, T, C, G, C, G, okay? Then another 10,000 years, change to A, G, G, C, C, G. After a million years, the same session, after so many generations, it change to C, C, G, C, C, C. So what it mean here, within the short evolution time scale, you still can recognize the non-coding part. Let's say this is so, you can they can recognize it. Okay, these two parts is the same. There only one mutation happened here. Okay, but after so many million years, or if you compare what is now and in the past, you can't really recognize it. Okay, there are not much similarity uh, uh, in the non-coding part. So this is for the non-coding part. However. For the coding part, what we call the gene, usually the DNA will remain perfectly recognizable okay, after many million years old. Okay. So, to study the genetic variation, we need both 
non-coding part and also the coding part okay because if you just use the non-coding part when we want to see why is the changes you have to align them okay if there's no region in the DNA in the non-coding part that we can recognize there's no way you can do the alignment okay and check what is have been changes where and how much have been changed we're going to discuss more in the next few lectures about this so these changes in the DNA we can use it to reconstruct the phylogenetic history okay or what we call the evolutionary history so the you know that the we discussed just now the genetic change over time so the genetic difference of two species determined by the length of the time they are separated separately evolved okay so the 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 longer they have been separate okay either between two species or two species population so it's more likely the genetic uh, the part of the gene, especially the non-coding gene, will be quite different. So the longer they have been separated, the more different they will be. Okay? Because the mutation accumulate according to time. Okay, so longer the time, the more mutation. So if more mutation happen uh, separately in two separate species of population, and the mutation is different, so they will be more different in their DNA sequence. So by understanding how the genome evolved, you can <coughs> unravel the evolutionary history and phylogenetic relationship between organisms. So exactly how this can be done, we're going to discuss more in the third part of our course, the phylogenetic analysis. Okay, to end to use some analytic analytic algorithm and tools to analyze the sequence difference and based on the difference you can infer the relationship between organism so if we, if we, as we said before some gene involve rapidly and some are highly conserved okay this is coding gene and those conserved gene can serve as a homologous gene as a reference okay. so <clears throat> There are a few more things that we related to this topic, for example, common ancestor, phylogenetic analysis, and phylogenetic tree. But I'm not going to talk in detail in this lecture, so we're going to discuss more in the next lecture. And by using the homologous gene as a reference, okay, we can describe the divergence between organisms. 